Hello, hello, hello. How are you all today? Um, it's another warm day here in Bakersfield, California. I think, what was it? I just looked. Right now, it is only 95 degrees. It's supposed to be 102 today. Um, this is kind of the cool period because in about a week, it's going to be 111 and over for degrees. But this is kind of our normal. This is not abnormal. For us, we call this summer. And um, it's just how it is in Bakersfield. And I'm sorry that other people are experiencing this now. Fortunately, we are prepared for it. We all have air conditioning and stuff like that and are used to living in the heat like this. It means you just don't go outside, you know, or if you do go outside, you go directly from your house to your car that has air conditioning. Hop in real quick and be sure to wear shoes when you're going outside because the pavement gets really hot. So welcome. To the live stream. We're going to continue on today with the uh, eye tag set in sleeve and with Frank's knit along that we're doing. So if you're just tuning in for the first time, let me know over in the chat that this is your first time. It's always fun to get somebody for their first time and say hi if you're a returning person. If you're watching this after the live stream is over and it's been recorded and it's on YouTube, you can check in each week. There's going to be another new live stream at the same time. So it's on Saturdays at 1 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. That's California time. So let's see who's here this week. Well, hello, Teresa from Virginia and Shatika Woods from Alabama. Uh, Linda Annabal from the Sunshine Coast. Elizabeth Nielsen from Sweden. Rona Shane from Southern California, not far from me. Kay Baker from Sonoma, California, that's north of me, and there it's nice and cool up there. Francoise from uh, France, Trevster from Spain, Marie Tobita from New York City, Carolyn Finnerman from Central Oregon, Inbal Gross from Israel. She was our, my featured person last week, and I think she'll be back to be featured more once she gets her yarn and gets started with Frank's sweater. Judy from British Columbia, Margaret from Chile, and Margaret, I'm so looking forward to seeing you in SOC class this coming Thursday. It's gonna be fun to get back together. Delise from Washington, Bradley Trahan from Peachtree City, Georgia, Pat B from Northern California, Susan Day from Washington State, Monique Van Heemstra from the Netherlands, Sidra Goldsmith from Vancouver, Washington. Gerald Butterworth. Hello, Gerald. I, have, I don't think I've seen you here for a while. Nice to see you back. From Atlanta, Georgia. Fatima from Portugal. Susan Day. Um, Donna D Dalziel from Windsor, Ontario. Vera Van Syke from Somerville, South Carolina. Lizanne from Benicia, California. Mary Scott. Uh, uh, Demetria. Amy Lynn, Lauren, Diane Sinclair, Deborah Cisneros, and more. So welcome to the live stream. So you may notice I have my uh, Franco sweater on. It's just, it ends right here. I got it pinned to the top of my shirt. So, but we're going to talk about that second. We're going to do the iTag Sis first. And I have um, two people to share their progress so far. And the first one is Pam. So we're going to go to Pam first. Let me put her on spotlight. This is my friend Pam, and she lives over at the coast. What's the weather over there, Pam? It's probably about 60. Oh, nice. Was it foggy yeah. this morning? Pardon me? Was it foggy? Oh, yeah, it's still foggy. Yeah. But I think the sun is trying to come out. Yeah. She lives, it's about what, like 130 miles from Bakersfield? 100 oh, not, miles? Not from Bakersfield. It, for Bakersfield, it's probably 150. Okay. Where I live in Wasco, it's 120. Wow. So, so she lives about 150 miles from me and a huge difference in weather. In the 60s there and 90s here. All of us in Bakersfield, we like to escape over to where Pam lives when it's hot here. Okay, so you're working on your iTag Sis. Yes. Can you tell us about what you're doing? Okay, well, um, I started uh, at the bottom, obviously, and did a, a lace border. 
And brilliant. so I've knit the front and the back. And um, I'm now ready to do the sleeve. So uh, Suzanne helped me draw the sleeve. And now I'm trying to figure out where, you know, the stair steps. So that's my next thing I need to do. So you've got the back done. Have you started? And the, I, yes. So now I'm ready to start the uh, the arm. The on both arm. pieces. On both pieces. Yes. Yes. That's, on both pieces. That's yes. what I'm doing on mine too. I think it's easier to do the arms holes at the same time. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm gonna do that, but maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that looks really pretty. Thank you for sharing. Maybe when you get the armholes in, we can come back and see how it looks. Okay. Thank you. Let's take a look at Jackie's. This is my friend, Jackie. Hello. Well, I'm going to show you, and you probably can't see it. This is my armhole. And Suzanne, I did this by myself. <laughs> Can you believe it? I'm so proud of you. <laughs> but see how it has the stair step and up. And right where that pink thing is, is where I'm at. So let me show you my sweater. I have to turn this around. Ugh. Can you see it? Oh, look at the lace up the middle. That's Japanese, Japanese knitting. That's gorgeous. Can you show the bottom down to where the thing is? Okay. And that's a scalloped edge. With Very lips. pretty. Yeah. Went into the lace really nice. That's yeah. gorgeous. So have you started on your front at all or have just been working on the back? I've just been working on the back because where'd I go? You're here. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just, I'm working on the back. I want to get it done first. Cause I'm real, I haven't decided what kind of neckline I'm going to have. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's me too. So, okay, yeah. Lem, I'm going to show mine. So I'm going to switch to me. So um, this is mine so far. This is the back. And this is the front. Wow. So I've got a ball of yarn attached to each. So I need to do, I'm going to do about two more inches on both pieces and I'll be starting the armhole. So basically I'm procrastinating because <laughs> I haven't decided what to do on the neck yet. So if I get both of these up to the underarm and then start my armhole and then I'll stop at the point where I have to make a decision about the neck. And then I've got to make that decision. So I'm not sure, you know, what would look good with this, what kind of neck. So um, it might be a boat neck. I might do a boat neck or a ballet neck. And then I got to think, you know, what looks good on me, not just what looks good with the stitch pattern, but what looks good on my body. I have a skinny neck, so I'm probably not going to, I don't know that. Coming up and doing a turtleneck might look good too. A nice necklace on it. That would be beautiful. Yeah, that might be interesting, huh? Because I'm going to use this design. I made a, the ribbing match. Do you see how I pulled some of the design elements down into the ribbing? I've shown you that before. So that. Ooh, there you go. I like it. That might be nice, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Uh-oh. Decision made. <laughs> yeah, I like that. But that's how kind of how I do it. I kind of I don't you don't have to have everything planned out until you get to that part. So um, let's talk. Let's see. Does anybody have any questions? I'll give you a minute. Um, any questions about the ITAG SIS, which is the, the set in sleeve. ITAG stands for it takes a guild and it truly does to do that type of thing. Um, I don't remember how many pages that was. It was like 80 pages for the tutorial. It's like writing a book, but you're designing your own sweater. Each sweater is completely different. And if you tuned in last week and saw Inball's sweater, you know, she really 
uh, took advantage of designing her own sweater. And it's just absolutely stunning. I know Francoise, I would like to have her get on here and share hers too. Maybe she will next week, but hers is uh, extraordinarily beautiful. The work that she's done so far, really, really beautiful. So let's shift gears and let's talk with Frank now. Um, so Frank, there you Hi. are. Hello. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. So you were just returned from your vacation. Yes. All relaxed. <laughs> uh, how hot is it in San Francisco where you live right now? I wouldn't call it hot. It's about 65 degrees, I think. So that's about normal for this time of year, isn't it? It is. We, we are fortunate that way. It's one of the great advantages of San Francisco is the cool summers when everybody else is sweltering and we still put on sweaters. Yes. When I went to school, you know, I went to Stanford and when I went to school, you had to layer. And, you know, I'm from Bakersfield in the summertime. You don't lay. you could wear a T-shirt and shorts all day and your flip flops. You know, I mean, that's about all you can tolerate. But up there, I literally you have to have a sweater on in the morning and then strip down to maybe a long sleeve T-shirt in the afternoon and then put your sweater back on. That's right. We went out to eat at a restaurant last night and um, we were eating outside some of the restaurants are still just serving outdoors and um, we all wore jackets <laughs> it was really strange because i know most of the country is really sweltering now yeah my uh, husband has a nephew that lives in santa monica in one of those high-rise buildings that faces the ocean and they love it there because they have this beautiful ocean view but every evening it's too cool to sit out on their deck <laughs> You know, yeah. And he comes up here and visits us and we sit out in the backyard and talk and he can't believe that we're sitting outside at nine o'clock at night and that it's comfortable, you know. But right. you don't do it at two o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> so how is it going with this knit along? What kind of feedback are you getting? Um, it seems like this week there have been a number of questions um, that I have answered both in email and in in my forum. There hasn't been a lot of interaction in your forum, but um, most people seem to be making progress. They've gotten through. A, a number of patterns have been sold, so I know that people are getting through the process of swatching and and figuring out how to get their measurements in. And the questions have not been too difficult. Um, uh, though uh, Fatima is online and we had a lengthy interchange this week because um, she she apparently uncovered a bug <laughs> that I still don't quite understand, but I think I have fixed it. Um, it was, the problem is it, it occurred very randomly. And um, so I can't reproduce it, but I, made a change that I think fixes it. But it's still possible to find bugs on the website. And I really appreciate it when people can uh, interact with me about it and I can learn what they are experiencing. And um, in th this case, the bug was that she put in a 15 inch neck and everybody else who puts in a 15 inch neck gets a 6.125 or six and one eighth inch width. And she got a five and seven eighths width on hers. She was the only one out of all the people that have ever put in 15, 15 circular neck, hers was different. And it's the same code that runs. It's just a mystery to me how- It was a little bug. A little bug got in there. Especially as a software engineer, I think computers are really deterministic and they should do the same thing every time using the same code. So it's really a mystery. Isn't that amazing? So when I started mine, when I started this one, I actually started it three different times. And um, I got you know, out quite a ways and realized that I had made a mistake, but it wasn't a mistake in the pattern. It was a mistake in my reading the pattern. Oh. You know, because I'm so used to not reading a pattern when I knit a sweater, because I, oh, yeah. you know, I knit to a schematic rather than line by line directions. Right. And I was putting in my assumptions Oh, you know, yeah, that's and, or, which were not yours. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 
I try to be extremely precise in it every is. phrase. It's, and, so you, um, if you read it, if you read exactly what it says and do exactly that, it turns out like this. That's right. It turns out really nice. At least I um, hope it does. <laughs> and I was going, you know, like you have the when you join the uh, body, you know, you do the underarms. I really mm -hmm. liked that provisional crochet cast on for adding the underarm stitches. I have never done that before. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I don't know where I picked up that tip, but I, as soon as I did, I thought, well, this is really a great way to do the underarms. I Since really, I really like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So because it, no seam, no picking up stitches, no bulk under the arm at all. Exactly. It's just like you've knitted straight up the side of the body and onto the sleeve. I'm going to adopt that now. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. I've certainly adopted a lot of things from you. In fact, one of the things that you told me a long time ago was how to, it, it, this isn't on the saddle shoulder, which I'm wearing now, but on the crew neck and all the other shoulders, um, there was a little bump at the start on each side where you picked up stitches. And you told me, oh, if you uh, knit two together or SSK and knit two together on the outside before you pick those up, it'll flatten that bump out and then add an increase on the next row. And I did that. And so now everybody says, why do you, why do you decrease and then increase in the same place? Well, because Suzanne told me that would be a good way to do it. It looks good. <laughs> it you does know, look good. I it, did it that really on this one too. And because, you know, it's the same thing is because when you're, when you're, I'll draw a picture, you know, let me go to my hands and I'll draw, I got yarn out here. Yeah, I mean a paper. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Um, let's say that you are, and this works for heel flaps too. So you've got a piece of fabric uh, that you've knitted. You know, you're knitting this way. Here's your live stitches here. Oh, you can't, you can't, you guys can't see it. I'm sorry, um, but everybody else can. So the stitches, the columns of stitches are going like this. And here's the next column in. Here's the live stitches up here. When you go around here, you're working this way. And so you're going to turn and you're going to pick up stitches between the selvage stitch and the first column in. So you're going to be picking up here. But this stitch is still on the needle. Let me do a better drawing. So you have your live stitches on your needle. And then you've got the columns of stitches that come down. This is the edge of the fabric. In my sock class that's going to start this Thursday, um, this is one of the things that I'm going to be teaching when we do the heel flaps. And Jackie's done some socks this way because I've shown her because the bump bothered her too. So you're, you've got live stitches on here, right? And you've knitted all the way over to here. Here's where your working yarn is coming off. And then you go down here and you pick up a stitch in between. So you're picking up stitches through between the first column and the second column. What happens is now this is really the stitch that's directly above the last column of stitches. And now you have this extra stitch out here. And what it does is it creates a little lump that comes out on the side of your work here. And it's noticeable. It is noticeable. So what I do is when I come, when I go over to this, when I'm working this way, I do a knit two together here so that this stitch goes on top of this one and it gets rid of that stitch. And then I pick up my stitches here and I get this perfectly smooth line around here, no bump. Then when I come back on this side and I'm picking up the stitches here and I get up to here, I do an SSK between these two stitches and it pulls this stitch under this one and hides it. Now you're two stitches less in your stitch count because you've gotten rid of this. And as Frank said, so on the next row, he has you make an increase, but it makes this nice smooth. So on your saddle, on my saddle, let me show you. 
down here where my saddle is transitioning from the um, body to the sleeve. See, it goes perfectly smooth, perfectly smooth along here. There's no little lump. I like that. It's those little itty bitty things like that that really um, make me excited about knitting. That's, I really like that kind of stuff. So you have uh, the saddle uh, shoulder on yours right now. Yes, right. I'm wearing uh, one of my saddle shoulder sweaters. Yeah. And this one was worked, um, it, it's in Tarja um, um, until I got down to knitting in the round. Um, so let me think how that worked. I can't even picture it now, but, oh, I know it's, it was in Tarja for, boy, I, my right and left are all messed up. Here. I know. <laughs> this section here, this, just this section where I was going around or back and forth, the neck had not yet closed. So I was going back and forth through this section. And, and over the um, shoulder and the other. And then I wanted the shoulder to continue to be in this other color. So I just used intarsia to knit across the Steve's cap right. and another another dark one on the back. And you're still knitting flat at that point because you're still knitting to flat down. So you're, the intarsia is easy to do. You don't have to think about intarsia in the round, which is That's possible. Right. Intarsia in the round is possible. It just takes a little bit more thinking about doing it. That's very right. cool. And that's the same thing. Um, so I wanted to talk while we're on this part, I want to talk a little bit about the saddle. If you want to put a stitch design in, like what I did, like let's say you might want to put a cable in. Okay. So you've got your saddle and Frank tells you how many stitches. My saddle is uh, 15, 15 stitches, 13 stitches wide. Mine was 13 stitches wide. So I needed to find something that was equivalent to 13 stitches in stockinette because I use stockinette as a stitch pattern that I put in for my directions. For my swatch, I used a stockinette because the majority of my sweater is in stockinette, but I'm just going to put the lace down the tops of the shoulders and the outside of the arms. So I, I knew I had 13 stockinette stitches to work with or the equivalent of 13. So I found a lace pattern that would fit in the same width that 13 stockinette stitches would take. And it turns out that my lace pattern, I could use 15 stitches. So I made my saddle, I cast on the 13 stitches. And in the very first row, I added two stitches to compensate for my lace that would take 15 stitches to make the same width. I have an example of here. This isn't lace, but it's the same sort of thing um, about stitch equivalency. Let's say you want to put a cable down across the saddle and down the arm. Both of these swatches here are 20 stitches wide. They use the same needle, the same yarn, the same knitter. So you can see, let's say that you're, so I'm just going to, say the saddle's 20, that it's not going to be 20 stitches wide, but I'm just using this as an example. Let's say your saddle is 20 stitches wide. If you put these three cables in there, it wouldn't take up the amount of space that you need to take up. Do you see that? Your saddle would be too narrow. And if you continued this three cables down your sleeve, your sleeve would be tighter than you expect it to be because 20 of the stitches would be pulling up tight like ribbing. So what you do, you have to figure out, in this case, these 20 stitches are equivalent to 14 of these stitches here. So if your saddle were 14 stitches wide and you were using this cable, you would cast on your 14 stitches and in the first row, you would make increases to make it, you would add six stitches. And in this case, it's two stitches per cable. And I used, um, leaning increases here so that they leaned with the cable. So that's that's stitch equivalency. In my case, I had 13 stitches of stockinette and my lace pattern, if I laid it over it, 15 stitches of my lace pattern fit over 13. 
stitches of my stockinette, so it worked. So what does this mean? This means you have to do a little bit of extra swatching. It does require extra swatching, but it's worth it because then you're not altering the size or shape of your sweater. So Frank, have any of yours had cables down them? Yes. Um, I don't have it with me, but I could run get it. Um, I did a, uh, uh, a sweater with a Celtic design on the front and a saddle shoulder with a cable across the shoulder and down the sleeve. And so did you use, did you compensate or did you swatch first? Um, I compensated. Um, well, I mean, I swatched in order to know how much to compensate. I don't understand yeah. the question exactly. Yeah. Um, yes, I, I swatched and just what you just did, you know, found out it was the width of so many stitches. And then I increased the number that I needed to make it the right width. Yeah. So Cat B has a question. If you purchase a pattern at a certain gauge for a particular yarn, if you want to make the sweater in a different weight yarn, do you need to purchase a new pattern? The answer is yes. And it's only six dollars. You know? <laughs> and, and he does all the calculating for you and it fits you perfectly. That's worth six dollars. Now I'll tell you, um, something came up this week that happened with um, Judy, one of my friends, and she had entered her measurements in, was it a year ago or two years ago? Frank, when we had the workshop here in Bakersfield two years ago? It was at least two years ago. Okay, so Frank did a workshop here and we all entered our measurements in and created a pattern in that workshop. And, um, but her body measurements have changed. So we were having a hard time figuring out where those changes happen in Frank's website. And where it happens is you go ahead and create a new sweater. You don't buy it, you just create it. You can create a sweater and put all your measurements in and it spits out how much yarn you need and stuff like that. And then after it's created, there's a little thing you can go up to where you can adjust your body measurements. And that's where you find that for people who have a change in their weight um, for one reason or another, and you want to change your original dimensions, you can do that. And then you finish the pattern and purchase it. So I've realized that it's a little bit um, uh, convoluted. You have to complete the entire sweater before you can go back and change the measurements of the person that you put on that sweater. Right. You can't, if you've already, like if, if I have my measurements in there, and I want to change them, I create a new sweater. It doesn't let me change my measurements when I first say I want to knit this for Franco. And I have to complete the sweater and then start clicking all the buttons to back up through it. And then I'll finally see update Franco's measurements at the top above those flashing pictures of the four different styles. That's yeah. weird. Um, but it's oh. not there the first time you see that page. Right. It's it's right there. before that you hit the buy button. It's right Definitely. before you hit the buy button. Yeah, so don't get frustrated if you can't find it. Just go ahead and like you're creating the sweater. And then when you come to the very last step, you can adjust the body measurements and it automatically fixes it just like that. Super easy. So Sidra asked a question. She said, will you be showing how to adjust pattern for larger hips or busts? Yes, we're going to start doing that today. We're going to talk about busts today because that's where I am on my sweater. I just finished, I joined it in the round. I did like three or four rounds after joining it in the round. So we're gonna talk about that. Um, in fact, let's do that right now. So I'm gonna to go to my hands again. So I have here my schematic from Frank's pattern. And if I wanted to add bus shaping, the first thing I need to do is I need to know how far down from the top of my shoulder is the, my bust point, the, the furthest out that your bust is going to be. You need to measure that. And I'm just going to arbitrarily say right here. And then you need to measure from directly midline under your arm, again, to your bust point. So you know how far it is in from the underarm. It's good to know these things. Okay. In fact, 
if I were going to add any sort of pattern, I do this. It's good to know this area on your body because let's say you're going to do a pattern, a lace pattern that has a star in it. You don't want the star to be right here. That would not be very attractive. You don't need a star here and a star here. So I kind of know where my bust is going to be on the schematic. So if I'm planning any sort of special stitch pattern, like let's say I had a cables coming down with bobbles, I wouldn't want a bobble right there. Um, so you need to kind of know that in advance and not after your sweater is knitted. So now we know where the bust point is. Then you need to, so you need a couple more measurements. You need to measure from the top of your shoulder to your waist. And what I do is you tie a string around your body, not on your schematic, on your body, tie a string around your waist, tie it pretty tight. And it doesn't matter if it's exactly at your waist. It just needs to be going around your body, horizontal to the floor. Then you measure from the top of your shoulder to the string on the front of your body. And you measure from the top of the shoulder, same spot, to the string on the back of your body. If that measurement is greater than two inches, then you should make some bust shaping changes. If it's two inches or less, you don't need to because knitted fabric stretches so much, so easily, and it stretches this way and this way that it will allow your bust to be there and fill the fabric out without needing any extra fabric. But let's say that it's four inches difference. I would subtract the two inches of what you don't need to adjust for. So you need a two inch adjustment. That means you need to add two inches of fabric right in here in the front of your body between here and here you would be adding two inches of fabric and how do you do that well first of all you don't want it to end right on your bust point so you would add the fabric out a little bit to the side so this is going to be your new fabric but you don't want to add fabric over here, do you? Because you want, you don't want it to be longer. If we go, if we just add fabric all the way across, we're just making our whole sweater longer. We only want to make it longer in the front where the bust is. We don't need it longer under our armpits. So you do this by adding short rows. So you would be, or you could do it like this. These are short rows. So you'd be knitting. And your knitting doesn't come all the way to the edge. Another way to do it is like this. I actually prefer this angle to this angle because this pushes your bust up rather than down. So let's put an X on this. So you would do, you would work across here and turn, work back, turn, work here. So you're just doing short rows in the front garment and then you go back to in the round again and every time you come here you're going to pick up those wraps. So you can see what happens is it does not affect the side of the sweater. I have another drawing. Let me show you this one. I use this in my boot camp three class a lot. I think it's it pictures it better. So if you had here's here's a drawing of the short rows. Here's this is just where the short rows are going to be. Here is this cut out, and you can see. There's not going to be any stitching in this area here. So it, when you pull that together and you pull this together, that creates your bust. So where this is empty, that means there's no stitches. So you would be stitching across and then you would do your short rows. And then you continue in the round. 
and this fabric here is actually connected to this fabric. This is hard to visualize. That's why I do this little cutout because this fabric is actually connected right here. So the sides of the garment are not any longer. Does that make sense? Does anybody have questions about that? This also shows, this is another drawing of showing short rows. If you wanted to add short rows to the lower portion of the front or the back, it like, let's say you have a, um, your, you have a kyphosis in your back. You have a strong kyphosis. So that's where you, some people would call it, you know, where your back is leaning forward like this. Um, you might need extra fabric in the back of your garment and you would add it this way. Notice these lines don't go all the way to the edge. They're slightly in from the edge. So you're just adding fabric here, not all the way around the garment. Same thing here, you can add fabric if you have a belly. You can add extra fabric right where you want it with the short rows. Any questions about that? Let's see. So if you want to do hips, we're going to talk about that next week because I'm going to I'm going to add some extra fabric in mine once I get past the bust. I'm going to start working on showing how to add hips. In fact, what I'm going to do on mine, you can see my sweater here. So I just have it to here. Once I get a couple inches lower, I am going to start bringing out almost like an A shape. I'm not going to wait till I get down to my waist to bring it out. I'm going to bring it out just at the lower portion of my bust. I'm going to start bringing it out like an A shape. And I've thought I might add this in the sides. I might not. I haven't decided yet. So when I get to that point, then I'll talk about that. Any questions? Questions? Go, Sidra, do the short rows, would the short rows not change anything in the schematic? They, you would draw them on your schematic, draw them in just like I did. And um, it doesn't change the length of the sides or the back. It only affects the part that you want to put the short rows into, whether it's your bust, your belly, or if you need extra short rows in the back, you can put them wherever you want. Just figure out how many, and how do you figure them out? I didn't discuss that, did I? So let's say you want to add two inches and you're getting seven rows to the inch, that means you need to add 14 rows, right? Because you need to add two inches. That was the example I gave was two inches. So if you want to add two inches, one short row is over and back. That makes two rows. A short row gives you two extra rows, over and back. So you would do that seven times and you would stagger them, just like I showed in the drawing. So it depends on your row gauge and how much fabric you want to add. And the biggest mistake I see people adding is too much fabric. So err on the side of less, don't err on the side of more because you don't want the front of your sweater to be longer than the back or you don't want the back longer than the front. You'd ideally want it to be horizontal with the floor. Okay. Diane Sinclair says, question, my pattern did not give me the amount of yarn to buy. Why would that be? It could be because you are using a really unusual gauge or you entered the gauge incorrectly. So that what can she do? Common reason. Um, let me look at it and see what I think. Okay, so, so you need the pattern number? I need to know the pattern number so I can look at it. That's cool. So um, Diane, number. if you look at the last page of your pattern, at the very bottom, at the very last line of all the writing, it says the pattern number. And you can send that to Frank. And he'll let you, he'll look at, he can look at your specific pattern and see what's going on there. That's, Any other questions about that? I get my email address right now? or um, they, Can't they me? contact you through franco.com? That's right. Well... Yep. It's not published anywhere, but it's Frank. Yeah, okay. At that. <laughs> okay, Frank at Franco.com. Okay. Yes. Here is Margaret Gibson. If you have a pattern, does the short rows affect the way you knit the pattern down the front? In your stitch pattern, yes, because in the short rows, you're going to have some right side rows and some wrong side rows. 
Whereas when you're knitting the pattern in the round, your garment in the round, all the rows are right side rows. So if you have a stitch pattern, you would have to pay attention to right side and wrong side rows. Now let's say that you're doing something in lace. It might interrupt the stitch pattern enough that you're not happy with it. So that's something you'd have to think about where, or like if I'm doing cables, let me go back to my hands again. I'll show you some examples. So what it makes you want to think about is I got more paper here. Okay, so um, here's your garment. Like this. And let's say that you're putting, you want to put some cables in. And you need to add short rows for the bust. I would make sure that the short row turns don't happen in the cable itself. They happen in the spaces between the cables. And do them the same on both sides. And, and when you do that, this cable will no longer be in sync with this cable. This cable will have more rows in it than this cable. So you have to think about that and how it would whether you really want to put short rows in there. If you're having a lace pattern, like my lace pattern is these diamonds, diamonds within diamonds. Um, I'm not a very good artist. If you did short rows through this, it would alter the shape of that diamond. And so I would swatch that and see if you are if it's acceptable to you. You know, some stitch patterns you can put short rows in. Some stitch patterns, it stands out. It changes the design enough that it does not look good. So you wouldn't want to do that. Any other questions? Let's see. Let me go back here. Heather Sharp Keys. Would you add extra garlic, garlic for a large buttocks? Extra fabric? Yes. Yes. If, if your sweater's coming down that far, yes. You know, but re one of the things I like to do, and in my iTag Sis that I did, is you make a sloper. And if you have um, body shaping that really requires alterations in your regular clothing and then alterations in your knitting, it's good to know what the alterations need to be. And creating a sloper like we did again, the iTag Sis, is uh, you find out what parts of your body need some extra help and how to do it, whether you need to add uh, increases or decreases or short rows. So when you make shape a garment from side to side and you wanna change the shape of it from side to side, like putting armholes in or waist shaping, you do that by using increases or decreases. That's how you shape a fabric from side to side. But if you want to shape a fabric from top to bottom, like a heel on a sock, a short row heel on a sock, you want it to bulge out for the heel, you use short rows. The short rows create, change the length in a section of the fabric without changing the length in the whole width of the fabric. The short rows just change one portion. And that's the portion, like if you were putting bust shaping in, you would change directly over the bust and not over the sides. <laughs> uh, Susan Day said, when, when Heather asked, would you add extra garlic? I think she means extra fabric for our large buttocks. And Susan says, extra garlic? Ha ha, couldn't figure that out and almost put Heather in timeout. <laughs> I thought we were talking about a cooking lesson there for a minute. <laughs> I do like garlic though. Any other questions or comments? So next week, what we'll talk about is waist shaping and the like an A shape, if you want to do an A shape. And that's not just for women, it can be for men too. So it, it's, you know, depends on your body dimensions, the shape of your body. Anything else you want to talk about, Frank? Not really. Um, it's, some of you may know that um, 
Franklin Habit has done a few blogs um, about knitting a Franco sweater. And he's in fact announced that he's going to do a second one. Um, and he said at the end of the first one that he added body shaping because even men are not straight from the armpits down. And so I think he's very trim. So he brought his in to the waist and maybe a little bit out. So he actually did real body shaping. And, and next week when we talk about waist shaping, because let's say, um, you know, for man or for women, but let's say for a woman with a large bust, it's really hard to add waist shaping in the front with a large bust because the waist and the bust kind of come in the same spot in that case. So what I like to do is I add extra waist shaping to the back. It pulls it in the sweater in from the back, which pulls the front to the back a little bit and gives you what it looks like waist shaping in the front without interfering with the bust. It is very attractive and it's easy to do. It's something that I talk about in the iTag Sis as well. You don't have to put the waist shaping doesn't have to be equal. It doesn't have to be equal front and back. You can have it just in the front. You can have it just in the back. You can have it in the front and the back, or you can have it on both sides. I really prefer it if you don't have a stitch pattern that it interrupts. I really prefer it in the front or the back or the front and back rather than on the sides. Because when you put it on the sides, it's real obvious. It's real obvious especially if you're using a lot of waist shaping. So Bradley Tran said, this has been very informative and Kat B says, thank you both so much. Yeah, I think we've covered everything we wanna talk about today. And you know, I, what I like about Frank, our personalities are so opposite, it's unbelievable. <laughs> like he is so laid back and so calm. And I'm like <laughs> sitting on the front of my seat, type A personality, do they still call it that? Is it still type A personality? Yes, and I've always been accused of having one of those. <laughs> I've never accused of being calm and laid back. Laid back is the last thing anybody describes me as, and I don't know why I come across that way in Zoom. <laughs> okay, so we're going to let you go. Um, be sure to share this with your friends. Share Franco's sweaters. Hits Franco. Let me put it up here. Let me add my little thing here. Let me find where it is. And can I invite people to my Zoom session and yeah. start in 45 minutes? Yes. Oh, yes. In in at 2.30, Frank yeah. does a Zoom. He has every week. And it's uh, you can find it through franco.com. I put it on the live stream last week, and I'm not finding where I wrote it out, Frank. I'm sorry. It's franco.com slash weekly underscore zoom underscore meeting and it will take you into zoom it'll be down below the in the description of this video once it goes live that information will be down there okay and i can't wait you know what i think i'm going to do because i'm i'm, I'm actually i would like to just continue knitting on this to get the body done but since I want to share my thought process of doing the body with you, I have to kind of put that on hold. So I'll work on my eye tag sis, but I might start on the sleeves. You know, you don't have to wait till the body's done to do the sleeves. If you're undecided about what you're gonna do on the body, the sleeves are pretty straightforward. You can move forward with your sleeves, okay? Okay, we'll see you all next time. Have a good week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Whoops, I got to end it.